Mike will <sighs> plunge her at the ready. Uh, move in on Elizabeth. Okay. Plunge away, Mike. <laughs> plunge away. Save her, Mike. You, you got this. <laughs> he, he'd like to use form of white knight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is going to be a dire conflict. Oh, God. I need you to make me a check. All right, we didn't lose any dice. We're still at 3d6, correct? 3d6. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Dude, my rolls have been garbage. We can blame roll twenty. Roll twenty. Why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah. I. Hmm. Actually, I think this would be a good place for Justin to give you guys some hope. Okay. Uh, I would like to give my hope die to Mike and sacrifice myself by keeping Elizabeth busy so everyone can get away. Okay. Now, you are sacrificing yourself in this dire conflict. It is still a failed conflict. But you now win the rights to narrate what this looks like. All right. Uh, as I run back in the room with this guy that was just running away from this thing, and the door is barred, I see this girl that we tried to save but didn't really work. She's covered in this goo. And I'm just going to sort of snap and say, no, I'm not leaving anyone else behind. You guys go. I'll hold her off, and I sort of, like, tackle her to the side. All right. He's way faster than Mike's. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you rush back to the group, dragging this man behind you. Back to Riley, to Ned, to Jim injured leg and Melanie you look up in time to see uh, Fat Mike charging towards uh, in the flickering light what seems to be the form of Elizabeth trying to save what looks to be a young woman who is on the floor screaming in terror as all of you turn and look at this, you watch as Mike begins to charge towards Elizabeth. The light on her, the plunger raised. She looks up, recoiling back from the light. As Mike gets one step closer, and then another. And then another. Until he's maybe five steps away, starting to swing the plunger towards her as his flashlight dies. You can hear a crack of wood. Ned quickly taking a step in to the dark cafeteria, holding up the iPad to illuminate it. What's happening? You can hear a... As you illuminate the scene of Elizabeth's arm raised up, the plunger having broken over her arm. As this goo now is dripping down from over this young woman. As she turns, 
and starts moving towards Mike, who is now without light and with only three or four inches of a plunger handle left. As Justin gives his speech, you watch as he runs forward, charging towards Elizabeth. You watch as he grabs her around the waist, picking her up, charging over towards one of the broken windows at the edge of the cafeteria. You watch <laughs> multiple globs of goo begin to start covering Justin's body. Screaming in pain. Gesturing for Mike to make his way back to the group. As he carries Elizabeth out the door and dives off the edge of the ship. Riley's gonna look at Melanie and be, I'm not leaving him. Okay, yeah, okay, sure. Let's, let's help him. Now's my chance! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, so I think I'm gonna... Hopefully I do this right. But Wrath is... Or Wrath, that's me. Uh, <laughs> Fat Mike... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Fat Mike is going to yell out, um... For Justin! And, uh, he's gonna run and punch Baby in the face. Um, and this is his attempt to sacrifice himself to get the group away and one step closer to, to safety. Um, and as he goes down for however it goes down, uh, he just wants to, his last words to be. Well, don't, yeah. don't, don't do that yet. Going a little bit too far ahead. Okay. As you charge towards this crying, floating infant the creature turns to look at you and you see its muscles tense as it leaps at you off of the wall Fat Mike turns his cocked fist now swinging towards the creature I need you to make me a check you have 1d6 plus your hope die so roll them separately. Roll 1d6 for normal, 1d6 for hope. Okay. Uh -oh. So I just rolled 9d6 and I didn't roll any sixes. Holy so shit. <laughs> you wow. succeed at striking this creature. Go ahead and describe what this success looks like. Oh my god, actually having control on the last candle? <laughs> you uh, yeah. So, Mike will hobble down the hallway towards this thing, and as it comes off the wall, straight at it. Hello? Oh, my bad. <laughs> I forgot I'm pushed stuff. Uh, <laughs> I'm over here just talking away. Uh, <laughs> did you guys hear any of that? Nope. We heard nope, as nope. it leaps okay. off the wall at you. Silence. Yeah, I, 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 took, <laughs> I took my hand off to, to act out what I was doing. Um, he'll, he'll grab it in his left hand and then just start beating the shit out of it with his right hand. Okay. Mike, the creature leaps off the wall at you, one of its clawed arms outstretched, reaching towards you. Your hands still numb. Your left arm reaches up, grabs the creature, and spins using its own momentum. You slam it into the wall. Raising up your right fist, you start to beat on the creature, striking its its chest, its face, 
you can feel with the little feeling you do have left in your right hand you can feel your skin beginning to tear away with each strike seemingly unable to really penetrate this thing's hide as blood begins to stain your hand mixing with the black sludge that's oozing out from between the scales your face your arms going numb in places where it splatters onto you the creature gives out a roar as it attempts to bite down turning its head biting at your left arm that's currently holding it I need you to make me a check 1d6 for your normal 1d6 for your oh no Mike Mike I would like you as this creature bites down and through effortlessly through your left arm How do you want your character to die? Oh, man. <sighs> Fat Mike will wrap his other arm around it, just holding it close. It's still gnawing on him, eating him alive, but he's holding it pinned. <coughs> and his last words, as he looks back at the rest of his group, he yells out one last for Melanie! Go get laid! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and with that, he'll, he'll roll into a bedroom uh, and be eaten alive. There is no bedroom. This is just an he open hallway. He will roll hallway. into the hall way wall. <laughs> you all... Melanie, Jim, Riley, and Ned watching the dim iPad light. Mike. Yeah, F's in chat for Mike, please. F's in chat. Jeez. F's in chat for Mike. Mike, I get my. There we. <laughs> is this not working? <laughs> Why isn't my keyboard working? There we go. So I'm on the wrong key because. Feeling is weird with this arm brace. You all watch as Mike grabs the creature, slams it into the wall, begins to wail on it. The creature turns, and with a single bite, you watch as it severs from about halfway to his his elbow on his left arm. Bites clean through the flesh, the bone. You watch as Mike tries to continue to hold it off, shouting out some absurd final words to <laughs> Melanie <laughs> as the creature shoves him off of itself. He stumbles back, grasping at his arm in pain. As the creature pounces on top of him, slashes out his throat, bends down, and begins to gorge itself on his flesh into his stomach as you all turn and begin to flee towards the stairs. As you can hear the vague sound of a baby giggling in the hallway behind you. Yeah, you probably have another two to three minutes of dim light from 
the iPad light before it dies as well and you're left in the darkness. I, I should hold him off while you run. That's the only chance. Or at least just gonna like squeeze his shoulder. I'm trying to get free from the. Yeah. I'm trying to break free and, you know, leave, stay behind. Mm. Okay. Riley, Melanie, are you gonna let go of Jim? That's what you want. The rally's gonna let go. Yeah, it's and then only... let's go as well. It's the only chance. Well, um, hopefully you give him some help before whatever happens. Melanie, Riley, you both let go of Jim. Following Ned over to the stairs as you begin to climb. <laughs> Run, your fools. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you turn as the creature is standing in the doorway ahead of you, or behind you, rather, and one of its clawed arms outstretched lunges at you. Go ahead and make. Oh, mm. go ahead. Try to stay alive for long, as long as possible. Okay. While buying them time. Go ahead and make me a check. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Damn. You got the, Damn. Yeah, you got the throw. Yeah. Okay. You did roll a six, so you did succeed. It is not your time to die yet. I, however, rolled two sixes, so I maintain narrative control. Jim, you're bracing yourself against one of the tables as the creature charges at you. So Melanie, you and Riley and Ned run up the stairs round at the landing halfway up to the main deck and look you watch as the creature lunging at Jim he ducks slightly rolling over allowing the creature's momentum to carry it over the table it causes a light tear through his shoulder causing him to cry out and more pain as the creature flips and slams onto the back of its neck, its back hitting the railing over at the edge of the ship as it begins to right itself as the three of you run onto the main deck of the ship. Jim watching them make it up to the top deck. The creature attempts to leap over the table and pin you down to the ground. Go ahead and make me a check. <clears throat> Hi. Jim, the creature is leaping over the table at you. How would you like your character to die? Hmm. I want him to move basically try to get up sitting in a sitting position but giving up and 
laying back, back down on the, his back with open eyes and open mouth, without a sound. All right. And claw in the chest. Melanie, Riley, Ned, the three of you climb onto the top deck. You hear a crash behind you. Jim, the creature, leaps over the table at you. Your leg giving out. You fall back. The creature's claws piercing through your chest as you fall backwards your eyes and your mouth wide open still from the surprise of your leg giving out so suddenly as the creature bites down into your throat the other one you better I sprint towards it. I'll do my best. What was that? I'm already gone. I'm already, gone. I've already I dropped the iPad and I'm sprinting towards the thing. I try. I want to sprint towards it and try to get into the uh, really behind it. Into the arcade? Yep. I'm going to sprint towards it. Hit if I can and keep running. Melanie, oh, Riley, as you are saying your goodbyes, you hear. The iPad drop to the ground and shatter. As the light from the iPad dies, suddenly from inside the arcade you can see blinking lights from the games, flashes of illumination in the space around you, almost like a strobe light going off. You can see Ned's form running trying to break past the creature into the arcade. Ned, go ahead and make me a check. Come on, Ned. Beat him with the cane. Beat him with the cane. I think Ned dropped the... stupid kids. I think Ned dropped the cane. He did? <laughs> oh no, Ned! First roll of the game. Yeah! Really? This is the first time I've rolled at all. Oh, really? Oh, jeez! How did you manage that? I don't know. I managed to not roll once in like eight I hours. I don't think I ever rolled throughout this game. I just lived in the background. You know what? I can check that. <laughs> I never rolled. Well, check. well, you're checking that, Hound. Ned, you attempt to break past the creature into the arcade. You manage to slip by it, but the creature rounds on you, lunging at you. You look around, there are a few games around you. How would you like your character to die? Oh my god. Ilgin's not wrong! Oh my god. Okay, next you want to play 10 candles. Your character needs to make more checks. <laughs> <laughs> I literally went through the entire chat log for this game. Not once. What? How? I don't know! I mean, I only ever got offered once, like, back in the auditorium. When we were in the theater. Oh, yeah, like, and you I passed. Or not. I was <laughs> you... like, yeah, it was better off if I didn't that time. <laughs> How would you like Ned to die? Yeah, it was, it was not bad, actually. Probably like the incredible amounts of numbness. Uh. I basically wanted to... I 
I kind of want him to be like uh, trying to get further in, even as he's being uh, cut and ripped apart. And as it, he is being uh, hurt and starts bleeding, it's actually shown the fact that he's starting to bleed black, the same tar that was coming from everything else. And he just doesn't even really seem to be noticing the fact that he's being cut apart as he's dragging himself forward. As if he just kind of lost all feeling at this point. Okay. He's running a lot easier, though. Ned, you break past the creature. <clears throat> Riley and Melanie, you turn, begin to sprint towards the bridge. Ned, as you break past the creature, it turns, rounding on you quicker than you are, its claws ripping down your back, beginning to shred your skin as you continue to try to run further in. Black, tar-like sludge begins to ooze out of your back in place of your blood. The creature takes a second swipe, cutting across the back of your leg, tearing the tendons as you fall to the ground, continuing to try and crawl your way deeper into the arcade. Before eventually the creature thrusts its clawed hand down, clutching and tearing at you as your world goes black. See you both step back in horror. Realizing there's no way to get inside. You can hear the giggle of a baby behind you. As you both turn and see the small floating infant slowly moving towards you. You watch as a green glow emits from its eyes. Similar green glow begins to emit from Riley's body. As Riley, against your will, you begin to be lifted off of your feet and into the air. And Riley's just going to scream, Melanie, run, run, <laughs> please. Just, Mary looks up, honey, see you soon, and fucking breaks for the, for the side. You know, the side that one could jump on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, yeah, you understand what I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah. Riley. Yep. I need you to make me a check. Yep. Okay. We are in an interesting situation. We both got ones? You rolled a one. You currently have your virtue. Oh. Perfectionist. Available to you. Let's give that a shot. <laughs> okay. Use your virtue. How does your virtue of being a perfectionist aid you? against I... telekinetic murder ocean baby. <laughs> I'm mostly glaring at it and trying to figure a way on how to work through this. Okay. And in the back of my head, I'm just like, stay focused, don't lose concentration, focus, focus. Go ahead and re-roll your one. Nope. <laughs> oh. Telekinetic baby. Telekinetic ocean baby. Yep. <laughs> Riley. Yep. How would you like your character to die? Uh. 
Well, this evil Kanellic baby from Ocean Hell has her the Kanellic Force. I'll say it just pretty much snaps her neck. And then probably starts eating on her. Alright. Melanie. Mm hmm. As you near the edge, you look back, watching as Riley is struggling, flailing her, her arms and her legs as she's lifted off the ground, glaring at this creature that's giggling in front of her, toying with her. As you watch in one quick motion, her head spins 180 degrees you can hear the snap as her neck breaks you watch as the glow around her intensifies and with a sickening tear one of her arms is pulled off of her body and floats over to the baby that begins to feast on it. You're about five, maybe six steps from the edge of the boat. Melanie has the sound of tearing metal echoes through your ears you watch as in front of you another one of these scaled creatures climbs onto the deck you glance around looking for another route and you can see another and another until you can see five of these creatures climbing their way up. The baby still busy eating from Riley's arm. Its eyes locked on you as it's giggling between bites. Yeah, she's gonna try to like juke around it and jump off. Juke around one of one of them and juke and just jump. She knows what she's trying to do. She's gonna not let this thing stop her. All right, you dash forward at the nearest creature, the nearest edge, trying to fake it out, juke around it. Go ahead and make me a check. Nope. We are in another interesting situation. Oh, I do have vice, don't I? You have your vice at the top of your stack. Yeah, I do, don't I? Would you like to use it to re-roll? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and re-roll your one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord. Okay. That, 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 that straight up luck. Melanie, you try to juke around the creature. It reaches out, tearing at your arm, your chest, its claws digging in and raking across your body. As blood begins to pour out of your wounds, quickly soaking your shirt. You can feel your breath shortening as you stagger, one hand clutching the railing. Still, the only illumination, the strobing lights coming from the nearby arcade. Off the edge of the boat, only darkness. How would you like your character to die? She just, like, feels herself. Paul, like, internally, 
and just hand on the railing, falls back against it, and rolls over. Her final act is rolls over, and as she's falling, to die, she's, there's no way she's probably not going to die from this, she's gonna hit the water. Hey, hey, up! Um, she just kind of shouts out, Fun, Fun Gluey, Mug, Laugh, Nuff, Cthulhu, Relay, Wagnif, Wagnalf, Patagon! And she's just plummeting and screaming that. Okay. She's trying to do the- th she's trying to contact the old one as she dies. I don't know if it's probably not gonna work, but it's gonna fucking be her last act. Okay. Stumbling, and this creature's strike. Stumble back, falling into the railing. Leaning against it, watching these creatures begin to steadily close in all around you. In one last final act of defiance, rolling over the railing as you plummet down, shouting these words, trying to contact the old ones. As you tumble over the edge, finish your last words, you can hear a deep reverberating laugh from around you. As you look down, you see a gigantic maw filled with teeth opening beneath you as it closes around you as you fall into it and into darkness. <laughs>